see. All right, we're going to get started. Hello, 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 hello. My name is Sharonda Parker. Welcome to Relationship Talk with Sharonda. I am your host. And um, of course, y'all know people send in questions and answers. For a while, I taught something called wife school. I'm not teaching wife school anymore because I'm not married anymore. However, the lessons are still on YouTube. All you have to do is search Sharonda Parker wife school and the lessons will come up. But I was having a conversation with my good friend Emerson and we were discussing, he was like, well, maybe you shouldn't have like, maybe it shouldn't be like a wife school, but maybe it should be some kind of life lessons, a woman's school or whatever, because as a woman, you know, even though you're not a, a much older woman, you've experienced enough to be able to teach certain things to other people, regardless of if people don't agree with uh, your relationship dynamic or, or whatever it is that you're into, there are certain things that people can still learn and benefit, right? So I was having a conversation this morning. Well, first of all, there was a adult entertainer and she basically said that the most important thing to me is honesty and transparency in a relationship. And I wanted to be so transparent to the point where you can bring this bitch home, you can fuck up, and I'll cook for y'all. I want that level of transparency, right? Cool. I'm like, I could feel that. But a lot of people couldn't get beyond the whole point of it being done in her face. And my thing is, no, I want a level of transparency to where it's, it's okay to do it in my face. Because if I was your best friend, right, you and your best friend do everything together and you do the shit in your best friend face, but the person that you with, y'all not in tuned enough to where y'all can be mature enough and do certain things and it's actually in each other's face. So beyond that, right, beyond that, another thing came about and I said, that I just believe one of the things that we are missing in our relationships, whatever type of dynamic it is, it doesn't have to be marriage. It doesn't have to be serious commitment. It can literally be a friendship. One of the things that I think that we are missing is a lot of times we are, we are afraid of pouring into people. And the only way we will pour into people is if we can possess, right? So this morning I was at AHA. And, you know, the lady, she brought the, um, my orange juice and all this kind of stuff. I love that orange juice. And I'm, I got the cup in my hand and it was like literally a revelation. My buddy across from me, he got the cup in his hand. He pouring, but he possessing, right? So you got the cup and you pouring. And, and of course, you know, you pouring, but you want to make sure you stop. This, this, this is how I see women pour. Women want to possess and hold on to the person. And I want to give just enough, right? I want to give just enough because the only reason I'm doing this is because I want to possess it for myself. In other words, I don't want to motivate, inspire, encourage to, to help you to be the best version of yourself to not possess it. For the possibility of you to make a choice and go and do some other shit that you possibly want to do. Because I only want to pour if I can hold on to it and I want to be able to give you just enough to hold on to it. See, I don't want to pour in such a way to where I'm pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring to the point that I literally allow you to overflow with some type of greatness. See, I'm pouring, but it's overflowing. I don't want to pour like this to the point where it's overflowing if I can't possess it. But see, that's where the control come in at because I'm the type of woman I'm a poor, I'm a poor, I'm a poor until it fucking overflow. Because I want to see you be the best version of yourself. I want to see you be the best man that you could possibly be. Even if you ain't being the best man that you could possibly be for me. I want you to be the best man and I want you to make your choice. That way that if you with me and you dealing with me, it's because you made your choice to do it. And not because I was holding on to it and possessing it in some type of way. See, when you're possessing it, you holding on to it. You're telling it what to do, where it can go. You got to come in by a certain time. You got a curfew. You got a motherfucking bedtime. When I lay down, it's time for you lay down. My door close at a certain time and all of this kind of stuff. You pouring, but you also possessing and holding on to it. And you're not giving it this freedom. We feel like we have ownership when it comes down to people. We don't own people. 
And what happens is y'all possess in such a way and you so controlling in such a way till you make people sneak. You make people go and do shit that they normally wouldn't do because you want to control, you want to hold on to it, you want to possess it, you want to do that. Whereas if there was an open line of honest, transparent communication and I could really keep it 100 with you about my needs, my desires, my concerns, my vision, my goals, and all of this kind of stuff, then guess what? You can pour. It could be there. You ain't got to possess it. And I'm going to still make the choice and choose you every time. When I put that video up, a woman said, Sharonda, are you not concerned about the man that you're giving this freedom to falling in love with another woman? I ain't never mad about a man falling in love with a woman, even if she ain't me. I ain't never upset about that. Because at the end of the day, if you love me and you giving me what I need and my cup, you overflowing it and you not possessing it, then guess what? As long as I'm getting what I need, I don't necessarily care about what you're giving her. And if you got so much love that you can give it to me and her, then so be it. But I ain't never mad or intimidated about another woman getting loved upon. I'm not, ever. So a lot of y'all have concerns, especially with this pilot shit, that, oh, what happened if he fall in love with her? So what if he falls in love with her? That's what Polly is all about. It's about bonding. It's about loving. It's about building with multiple people. That's what it's about. So if that happens, then I don't necessarily see anything wrong with that because that's all that all of that comes along with the Polly dynamic. Right? So I ain't never intimidated. So another thing was, another woman said, well... I don't necessarily know how you have the mindset to do it. Well, one, I'm not a jealous person. Two, I'm not intimidated by another woman. See, one thing about it, if I'm dealing with a man, I'm going to give him my A game. In other words, if I deal with you in any type of way, you're going to multiply. Anything you're working on, going to multiply. Anything that I touch with you, going to multiply. In some type of way or another, it's going to multiply. My razzle dazzle going to come here, it's going to grow. My razzle dazzle is going to come here. It's going to grow. When I get to dealing with you, you're going to grow. Because you're going to feel so good about yourself. Because why? I'm pouring into a fucking overflow. Because that's what I do. When I wake up in the morning, guess what? Any nigga I'm dealing with, I'm going to encourage him. He going to get a good morning from Sharonda. And guess what? He going to get a kind word too. He going to get that. Because I'm going to give it to him before he go out into the world. Because what I know is the world ain't going to give it to him. And I don't care if other women are giving him these kind of words either. Because in my mind, the more the better. Because I want to deal with a man that is great in every aspect. So if it takes more than one woman to do it, then it takes more than one woman to do it. But I don't feel no type of way because what I know is when I come and I deal with you, I'm giving you 110%. Anything that I do for you, I'm doing it with the spirit of excellence. So guess what? If she come along, she better be, she better be ready to work. She better be ready to work just as hard as I'm working. But the thing is, a lot of us know that we're not giving 110% when it comes down to the people that we're dealing with. And we know that we leave all of these voids in place. And the thing is, we're not going to ever be everything to everybody. That's another thing that we have to understand. It's certain shit that you're just not going to want to do that they're going to want to do. And that's okay. But again, if I'm giving 110%, I ain't necessarily worried about being replaced. What am I worried about being replaced for? Because I'm giving 110%. Now, guess what? I may not be meeting all of your needs, and you may have somebody to come in and fill that void, but just because they fill in that void don't mean that I'm eliminated. No, this person is coming in and filling the void. And a person like me, I'm smart. So I'm not going to feel no type of way because you're coming in and filling the void. Bitch, I'll try to network with you. I'm going to try to see what the fuck we can do together. Because when you're looking at poly, a lot of times y'all are so... And even this is really for people that's poly, I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of times when people that's poly, y'all try to run parallel poly, right? And what happens is normally as a hinge, you over-exhaust yourself trying to be here and trying to be there all at the same time for everybody. That's very hard. Versus trying to form a pyramid. 
to where you're bringing both of your people together, not necessarily in a sexual way, but you're bringing them together to where is y'all can actually do stuff together to where you're not overextending yourself here, overextending yourself there. You're bringing them to where they're more of a pyramid. And guess what? If you got to show up for one, then guess what? I could be over here and I could show up for Sharonda and I'm going to bring her with me and we're going to show up for Sharonda. And guess what? If she got some, something going on, I'm going to be over here with her, but I'm going to bring Sharonda with me so that we can show up for her. That's what it's supposed to look like. But a lot of y'all on bootleg poly, you don't understand the dynamics. It's a sneaking and a hiding and a lying and this, that, the other. It's not a level of transparency where it's supposed to be and then shit blow up. And that's normally the way it happens. So kudos to the lady who did the video about, you know, you can bring the woman home and hell, I'll cook for y'all. See, a lot of times people think that because you pilot that you got to be sleeping with everybody. I have said it over and over again. I don't do women. So even if the man that I'm dealing with is dealing with a woman, I ain't got to deal with her. But that don't mean that I don't have, that, that, that doesn't mean that I don't support him in dealing with her. That doesn't mean that if he say, what's well, Sharonda look? This is somebody that I like. I'm going to be dealing with them on a regular basis. We need to come up with something because me constantly going to get a room is becoming expensive. I'm going to be like, bring her to the guest room. Deal with her in the guest room. I ain't got to go nowhere. If you want me to go somewhere, I can go somewhere, but I ain't got to go nowhere. I will fucking cook for y'all. We can all three of us sit at the fucking table together and eat, and we can send her off on her, her you know, farewell so we can have a great day. It was a great time with you. But that's a person with a real poly mindset. Everybody not there. And I understand that. But a lot of people try to play in this pond and then you can't handle it. You, you can't. People say, well, a is this a dynamic and this person having sex with the person or whatever and you, you're not into it or whatever. I can watch my man fuck somebody else and not be involved in it. I'm perfectly fine with that. Did you enjoy yourself? Did she do everything you wanted her to do? Do you need to go and look for, do you see anybody else you like in here? Everybody not there. So the thing is, if you're not there, don't come swim in this pond. If you're not there, don't come over here playing because you're going to end up getting hurt. Your feelings going to be hurt. You're going to be jealous. You're going to be insecure. You're going to be feeling like you're lacking in some type of way. Just because my man dealing with another woman sexually don't ever make me feel like I'm lacking in no type of way. Because I can distinguish, like in other words, I can separate sex from love. There are people that walk this earth that I love dearly, but I don't have sex with them. And there are people, or per, a person, whatever, that I will have sex with, but I may not necessarily love them. But for whatever reason, we, we come together well sexually. And when it's all over, I understand it's sex. It's not love. But a lot of times we try to tie sex and love together. Um, we want to play around in this poly pool by throwing a threesome in there every now and then because we want to add some excitement. But at the same time, we insecure because when a woman show up and do the threesome and she show up and show out, now we don't want to do the threesome no more. But what you should do is let your man go ahead and do what he's going to do because you're trying to be there to watch the threesome and micromanage it. But all you're going to do is get your feelings hurt because you're not mentally equipped to even deal with what you're seeing. So, in my opinion, if you're not real about this life, you'd do better doing a fucking free hall pass, letting him go do turn up the way he want to turn up with this person because a lot of times, well, another thing you don't understand is what a person do with you sexually, they may not necessarily do with another person sexually. And I've seen this firsthand, especially when it comes down to positions and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, well, why? I noticed that we don't do certain positions. And then I was told, well, everything not for everybody. Okay, cool. But then I turn around and I see this position being done with somebody else. And it's like, well, damn. But at the end of the day, everything not for everybody. Right? So the point that I'm making is, even when you're in these situations where you're able to see what's going on, you got to know, do you really want to see what's going on? Can you really handle what's going on? Can I really handle being in the same house and he bringing somebody here? Well, I may not necessarily be the one that want to cook for them in the morning, but I'm a person, I, I believe in hospitality, okay? So if my man bring a woman home and bring her in the fucking guest room and he tanned it down with her in the fucking guest room, 
I'm going to make sure she's straight, taken care of, and cared for under our watch. And I don't want to touch her. But under our watch, I'm going to make sure she's good, and I'm going to make sure she's safe, and I'm going to make sure she's taken care of. But everybody ain't on that level. So that's why I say a lot of y'all, y'all think you, y'all think you know me. You think you know me. You don't know me. You think you know me. You see the personality on the internet, but you don't know me. Even when I was married to my husband, we had the conversation. A lot of y'all won't even have the conversation. But even when I was married, we had the conversation. And I was like, you know, is this something that you want to explore? The, the answer was no. I don't want to explore it. I don't want to take the time to get to know nobody else. And I, you know how I feel about body fluids. I have an issue with body fluids. Like, I know you. I'm comfortable with you. I know how you take care of yourself. I don't necessarily know that about another person. But the thing is, the conversation was had. But a lot of times, like I said, I've just experienced where women, they don't want to pour unless they're able to hold on to it and possess it for themselves. In other words, the only way I'm going to put into a man and do all this and motivate him, encourage, inspire, all this kind of stuff, is if he for me. But no, I feel like any man that come into my life, for whatever reason, whatever dynamic, whatever it is, I'm going to always pour. I'm going to always make sure that before you go out into the world, you know who you are. So don't be afraid to pour. And, and, and now that part, that ain't for pilot people. That's for anybody. Um, you dealing with somebody, make them feel good. Encourage them to be the best version of themselves. And the thing is, when you encourage people to be the best version of themselves, they're going to show up and show out for you. But y'all so scared to pour and then they're going to run off and take it somewhere else. So what if they go run off and take it somewhere else that they, they wasn't your person? It just wasn't your person. You don't want, I don't ever want somebody being with me because I'm controlling the situation for them to be with me. I only want you to be with me is if you with me 100% and this is where you want to fucking be. So I'm going to always pour and not possess because you're going to do what you want to do. And even if you don't choose me, I'm going to still be a great person to you. Because I don't feel no type of way about not being your choice at all. I'm going to always show up and I'm going to always be a great person. Because that's just who I am. Yeah. So that's my video on pouring and possessing. I hope you all can chew the meat and spit out the bones. Meaning the parts that apply to you. Take it and run with it. If you're not poly and that ain't your thing, cool. Disregard that part. But I'm talking about that because that was the video that I put up this morning. And I just want you to understand that some of us really, really on a level to where we will allow the men in our lives to make a choice. Meaning that we ain't on no shit about trying to control you or whatever. You here is because you want to be here. And it ain't because I'm letting you do what you want to do. And it ain't because I'm delusional. It ain't because I don't have no self-worth. It ain't because I didn't know. It's because I'm realistic. And I know more than likely... He going to want another piece of pussy outside of mine at some point in time in the relationship. Most men do. That's why they cheat. Because they can't come to you and tell you, Lakeisha look real good over there to, to me. And me and Lakeisha, we really be having a great time together. And the relationship kind of going in that direction with Lakeisha. But what happens is the relationship going in that direction with Lakeisha, then he sneak, he cheat, and then there's guilt, there's shame. And now y'all relationship all over the place and all over the Nope, I desire a true, authentic, honest, dynamic. That is what I desire. You know, everybody ain't on that level. And I get that. It ain't for everybody. All right. That's going to wrap me up for today. Um, I'm here at the store. I'm working. Um... Like, share, subscribe to YouTube. I already know this video is going to make a lot of money. Uh, my, all my pilot videos on YouTube make a lot of money. Um, so, of course, I'm doing the content that people want because, honestly, poly is really going to be the new normal. It just is. Um, a lot of people are trying to hold on to tradition and all of this. It's too, it's too much stimulation going on outside of your household. Meaning the person going online and getting stimulated. The person going to work and getting stimulated. The person going to the gym and getting stimulated. And 
our grandfathers went to work and came home. They didn't have the internet. They didn't have access to information. They didn't have all of these different outlets and places and all of this other kind of shit that's going on. So this is really the new normal. So when you look back five, two years from now, you start seeing more and more and more people who are in open dynamics. You're going to say Sharonda Parker said that this would be the new normal because it is. The only difference is uh, it's been going on with a lot of people, but a lot of people, they hide because they know it's not well accepted. I have always been transparent about my life. I have always been open and honest. And if you look at videos that I did three and four years ago, I told you that monogamy just does not work. I told y'all that. And I told y'all that polydynamics are more open and honest. We get tested more often. These relationships are a lot more safer than y'all monogamous relationships where you think a motherfucker ain't stepping out on you. And the truth is, and I'm about to, I'm about to wrap it up after this, most times when people step out, they use condoms the first time. They use a condom. But the thing is, you're going to use a condom, but then you're going to eat pussy. That never made sense to me. You gonna eat pussy, but then you gonna put a condom on. Okay, so we gonna say, well, the condom is not necessarily about STDs. Maybe the condom is about protecting you from pregnancy. Okay, but the thing is, once people start getting comfortable with one another and they done fucked two or three times and all them butterflies and comfort and went out the door and all, all that shit there, guess what? They not bringing condoms. This motherfucker ain't stopping to the corner store before he come over there to lay dick. No, he not. He just coming to lay dick. And she ain't got no condoms and he ain't got no condoms, but they still gonna fuck. And you at home, being monogamous, doing your one checkup a year for your annual visit, you in way more danger than I'll ever be. Because I go get tested four times a year. So if anything go on with me, I'm gonna catch it way early on. Right? Whereas you didn't let a whole year go by because you only get tested once a year. Because you believe in the person that you're laying next to. And I ain't saying not to believe in them. But what I'm saying is, be realistic about what goes on in this world. That's all I'm saying. Do all men cheat? No, they don't. All men do not cheat. Do majority of them? Yes, they do. Okay? That's the reality. Okay, that's going to wrap me up for today. Like I said, come see me. Don't forget to pour... Until it overflows. Don't be don't ever be afraid to pour into your person. Cooking and cleaning is great, all of that, but we gotta get up here. When we're dealing with our men and, and, and for them to be the best version of themselves, we gotta get up in here, we gotta get in their head. That's where it starts at. You gotta be on their mind. That's where it starts at. All right, I'm done.